Hey guys, welcome to episode number 24 of Suits and Sports. My name is Ryan James. I'm joined by our founder, Mr. Subrajit Chanda. And both of us on behalf of the team of uh, Sport Your Education and Global Sports Policy Review would like to welcome all the way from the United States of America, the Lomelai brothers. Uh, Ronaldo Lomelai uh, is a former player at the forward Madison uh, Football Club. And his brother, Romario Lomelai, is a former player at San Diego, 1904. Apart from being professional football players, they are also entrepreneurs. They both have started a clothing brand as well. So without further ado, uh, Ronaldo and Romario. Hey guys, what's up? Hey, how's it going? Hello. So, welcome to the show, guys. And uh, thank you for your time this weekend. After, so today, don't guys, you don't you have guys don't have any practice, and then again, you are here, and that's a lucky thing for us. And see you both guys together is another big, big thing for us. No, thank you for having us. Appreciate it. So the first thing I just want to know from my side, right? So you, how your brother started your professional career as a football? What's the story? Okay. Um, well, I'm the younger brother and then there's him and then we have an older brother. We can, we can see that you are taking permission from your <laughs> older brother. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, so basically our older brother kind of started up like in club soccer and then he followed that path and then um, I followed them, uh, got into like the academy system out here in the U.S. And then from that, we both went to UC Riverside for college, played there and just continued our career there, um, went to trials, combines, and then got picked up and scouted by um, the teams that we were with last year. And uh, how does it goes after practice, like in house also, when you are in your home also, right? So do you guys uh, talk about your performance with each other? Yeah. Like, all, yeah, time, all time, all time yeah. football or something like that? Yeah, all the time. So, and another thing I just want to know for you, you guys, uh, like Ryan, I'm giving it to you. Just want to know one thing for you guys. So who motivate whom? Is the younger brother motivate the older, or the older brother motivate the younger brother? Um, I think it goes a little back and forth. Um, I mean, we're always playing soccer. We're always training. We're always um, just around soccer. So, I mean, there's days where we go training. I mean, I don't really have the motivation, but he motivates me to, all right, let's get it, you know? And then other days he doesn't, I mean, not that he doesn't have motivation, but, you know, sometimes you don't feel like doing it. He, I motivate him and it's just being around each other. And I mean, who we surround ourselves with that mostly like we motivate each other just like whenever we need it. We don't really need it too often, but I mean, you always need that little spark just to like, hey, let's get it, you know, a little harder, a little this and that. So it goes back and forth for sure. I think that's the essence of siblings, that competitiveness and that encouragement they give each other. Uh, so I want to ask you guys a question. So growing up in a country like the USA where you have a lot of other prominent sports like uh, basketball, uh, you have your American football, baseball. Uh, what actually influenced you guys to start playing soccer or uh, football? Um, I mean, for sure, the, I mean, our family, our family is very soccer. Like my dad loves soccer. I mean, obviously naming us uh, Ronaldo and Romario, like he really loves soccer, but um, <laughs> Just in the the area we said we were around, it wasn't really soccer. It was more like basketball. It was a lot of other sports, but um, I think the friends and like our family just it's a game we love and we're surrounded with. So once we started playing, we obviously play like basketball, soccer, um, baseball, like other sports, like any other little kids. But I mean, we just fell in love with soccer, and after like a certain age, we, that's the only sport we really wanted to play. Oh, that's that's great to know. Uh, so uh, also, so you guys recently, uh, not recently, uh, you guys are also entrepreneurs. So what actually, you know, uh, made you guys, you know, come through that decision to start your own clothing brand? Well, I started with I started with him and one of his best friends, uh, Brian Huerta. So they like they like just came up with the idea. They like they were just what was it? Just thinking about like oh like he's really into like fashion and getting into like the way like style and dressing. So he was just like oh like I want to create my own thing. So he ended up they, he ended up like brainstorming with Brian and putting together ideas and they kind of thought of the mantra that's on the back of our clothing, which is simple con alegría, which means always with joy. 
kind of like a lifestyle thing to remind people that that's what life's all about. And from that, like they made a hat and the hat kind of took off just around our community and stuff like that. More people just supporting like, supporting like because of friends and because like people like, like what we do. And then mm -hmm. from the house, we went on to shirts and hoodies and it took off from there. And then we have more ideas in the works. So it was just more like, it started off as a hobby, just like, okay, this is an idea that we have and we like it. And then I jumped on board as well. And we just started to make it more like an actuality. And I think for, for me, like a lot of the, the big reason of starting it was just cause, um, I mean, the message is siempre con alegría, always with joy. And that's something that, um, I mean, joy, like soccer has given me a lot of joys, whether it's like through memories or relationships. And I mean, uh, soccer has given me so much happiness and joy that I felt like it was not only right, but like I wanted to like have something that spreads that. And I knew like that message of always with joy, no matter what you're going through, like that's something, that's a message I wanted to send across because I know soccer is a big factor to that. Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, so I wanted, it's more about the message and spreading it to others and like showing the what soccer has done for me and I know a lot of other people feel the same way of what soccer has done to them so it's just like I feel like it's a message a lot of people could relate to so that's why I felt like it was a big reason I wanted to start it with him and my friends. Wow that's again a very good surprise itself you can yeah so I just want to know one thing so is it off day really means off day because in the other hand, with a professional football, you're an entrepreneur, right? So, it means, does it mean it's like uh, off day means do you guys really enjoy your off day or like the time you get training off from your training, you go for your company's work? It's it's really rare that we get an off day because I mean, even like the off days, like we're like watching like soccer, or we're like we're getting a coffee with each other and talking about ideas that we've come up with and stuff like that. like. With the stuff that we do, like, you don't really think of it as work, you know, it's more just like, it comes around and you talk about it or like, like going to the field and playing is like fun, you know, like, not every day has to be 100% going hard and stuff like that. Sometimes it's just going to the field and passing around and talking and getting together with your teammates or your friends that you train with. So yeah, like off days, like, not the regular off days, but yeah, you still get to relax and enjoy it. So, so basically you are so enjoying me. Go yeah, right. Please go. No, no. I was asking. Basically, your work days is also pretty much like your because uh, because you're doing things that you like. Like you're you're playing soccer and like you said, you're bringing joy through your uh, brand. So you guys do enjoy your work days as well, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Exactly. Super. So we can. So what about the Xbox program? So normally all the soccer players has Xbox with them. <laughs> they play FIFA and all. That when they get off time, which we see normally, right? Uh, so, do you guys ever have any thought of the Xbox program? No, we used to when we were younger, but we haven't like got any of the new systems or games. But I wish we had one. <laughs> yeah. I want to ask how you guys. The name goes. So, right, right. Just I just want to know how the name came, the Roland Romero, like uh, the football players. How this came? Like, is it from the our legend players, which we know, or like? Uh, just the name Kim. Nah, from the Brazilian legends. Well, I was born in 1998, and I was like Ronaldo's like coming out and work in World Cup in Brazil and all that. So I got lucky with that one. And then he got Romario. So yeah, I just saw for like the World Cup, and my dad was really like, I mean, I guess he had a, was really into the Brazilian national team, and yeah, that's where we really got our names from from the World Cup, basically. Do do any of you wish you were born a little later on? You you would have gotten the name Neymar or something, <laughs> or you're happy? Nah, well, well, maybe pass it down to someone else. <laughs> oh right, yeah, you can do that. Um, so the question I want to ask you guys is, uh, so uh, you guys you guys will have your respective positions that you play. So uh, based on your position, um, uh, who is that one footballer who's played at the professional? I mean, who's played at the you know, who, who, who's that one footballer who's actually motivated you in terms of work ethic and the, the way they, you know, present themselves in the field? I mean, uh, footballer, 
I mean, I wouldn't say he's a footballer, but an athlete that like for sure has motivated me and like his work ethic and everything is for sure. Um, Kobe Bryant, I mean, just um, growing up in LA and just everything he meant to the LA community. And I mean, just everybody in the world, the way he, his work ethic, his determination. And I mean, rest in peace for sure. But um, just like, that's an athlete I for sure, like, waking up like it'd always be like that he'd give me that motivation and just like hey like what would he do like how did he approach this and I think that's an athlete I for sure still to the day like really like watch and look at his interviews and the way he just carried himself and just everything about him honestly that's that's a big reason why like I started we started the brand just like everything he does we always wanted to leave a mark on the world and the way he inspired people to be the best versions of themselves. I think that's something we for sure like want to do in our life. And what about you? For me, like for me, kind of same thing, like the motivation. I mean, like as a younger brother, like motivationally and like the work ethic and mentality, I think I got that from him and my older brother. You know, they both like go after their daily life like really hard and like put everything they have into it. So like I like saw that growing up. So like it became a trait in me. And like on the field, I think um, as a right back, and like I recently became a right back in the last two years. So like mm -hmm. I really like studied him and like paid attention to him. And like probably like that's the one time in soccer that I try to just focus on one thing. And it was uh, Danny Alves. And even now, like I love like the way he approaches the game. Like it's like, like I think when I play, like I have a lot of passion and emotion and like I like care a lot. So I think like Danny Alves portrays that. And especially as a defender, like not the biggest guy, but like he inspires me to like play like him at least and like to go after it and like have that same mentality on the field. So <laughs> say Danny Alves as soccer wise. Danny Alves and Kobe Bryant. That's nice. By the way, Romario, this is episode number 24. So it can be have that. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Subrajit, sir, over to you. That's good. I just want to know one thing from you guys. Like, I don't know, like, uh... As you, one of the, you are playing for San, Di San Diego, right? San Diego 1904 and one is for, for Old Madison FC. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to know one thing, like uh, most of the people does not know in India that San Diego 1904, Deba and, and Eden Hazard also. In yeah. There. So have you met with them? Uh, I've met... Um... Demba Ba, but Hazard and I haven't met him, but I met Demba Ba. He came to, during season, he was with us, he's, he was with us for like a week, a week and a half, and just kind of like, basically like took everybody under their, his wing and just kind of showed him like how to be a true professional and just his approach and mentality to the game. So that was really, that was really awesome just to be in the presence of him and learn off of him and just all the knowledge he had was, was awesome to be honest. Hopefully he has it. <laughs> and I am a Chelsea fan, right? So you know De Baba Hazard. Make yeah. a mark in our life, right? So has they motivated you to support Chelsea? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so which club you support you guys support? Um me See, before They're, telling um... the name of the club, before telling the name of the club, remember that uh, you are from the club where Aiden Hazard and Dimbaba. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm expecting a name. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I support for sure. Um, I've always been a Barca fan growing up, but yeah, I love Barca for sure. But like, I'm a big like Messi fan. I love Messi, so like, I'm always gonna. Where now that Messi's with PSG, I, I just want him to do well. So I'm for sure a big Messi fan and a Barca fan. I'm on the same so Ryan will, So Ryan will be very sad on this scenario. So basically in this room, we have three Messi fans and one Cristiano fan. Uh, Who, who's the Cristiano fan? <laughs> Michel, no. <let's> <laughs> Your name is Ronaldo, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you can't betray us like this. <laughs> Ryan, you have to share his, his name is on the original Orlando, right? The original one. <laughs> okay. Just keep this thing in mind. If it's original Orlando, there is only one person. Mm -hmm. Right? Not Christian Orlando. Yeah. <laughs> there is only one Messi, one Orlando, one Maradona, one Pele. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so you're getting our point. <laughs> 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 Letting that go. 
But but my question to next question to you: Have you guys uh, over your professional playing career? Have you guys played a game against each other? Not in the professional um, field, but we did in college. I went mm-hmm. to San Jose State my first two years, which is another Division mm-hmm. One university. And he's always been at UCR. And then my my freshman year, yeah, my freshman year, we were on the same on the pitch together. Oh, well, you were together as well. Yeah. Um, so it was like my last year, my senior year, and it was his freshman year. And um, we played mm-hmm. against him. And I mean, it was cool because my whole family, we all, they all went to San Jose wow. and watched the game. And uh-huh. I mean, just being on the same pitch and playing against each other was just. You like, scored, no? Yeah, I scored that game. So it was oh. like, it was a good feeling, you know, just, I mean, just uh-huh. playing against each other and just seeing how like far we came and being on the same pitch. And so like after the game, just like, Hugging each other and like just being in the presence of our family in the game. It was uh, for sure mm-hmm. like the probably best memory I've had in the college career. And to be honest, like right. just soccer and football in general, like that's a memory that like, I got to talk on forever. And it is something mm-hmm. meaningful for sure for us and our family. Wow. Speaking of which, who's the more uh, aggressive person on field among the two of you? Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Like, do you have a moment that you would, you know, always remember, like a, a particular red card or yellow card or something that you got? No, that no, that moment should be against the big brother. Have you, no. Do you have any moment <laughs> against your big brother? No, I mean I'm on the smaller side, so I'm like really aggressive, and I love, like, I like to talk, you know, I like to like, like win a mental battle and stuff like that. So like every game, like I like to just like establish my presence and be like a dominant figure, you know, even though I'm smaller and stuff. So. And like I like I enjoy confrontation. Like I like I live for it. So like I think that's why I like I'm a I de- became a defender, you know. So I don't got a particular moment, but every game you go, you'll find one. So see, see, I will say the height doesn't matter, right? Because there is one legendary defender, Philip Lam. He's he's also short in that. Yeah. So height doesn't matter for a defense. It's a skill who matters. So you put the pressure, you just like talk about the mentality pressure and all that's also make an impact. Right. Mm-hmm. Hey, I will see you. Football field, you were saying, like, hey, I will see you. I will see you. <laughs> then he was like, okay. <laughs> there, will, there will be a missing from the striker. Right. Okay. He's checking. <laughs> so tell me one thing. Like, uh, I just want to know one thing from you guys. Like, if you guys were not a footballer, so what was the other option you're going to be? Was like other sports or in some other career? What was guys you are looking for? Like, if we're not a footballer, what is the other side? I never really even, like, I, I can't really say because, I mean, football's been a part of my life, like, the, my whole life. So, like, honestly, when people tell me, like, if you were, in, like, a football, like, a soccer player or, like, what else, I mean, I, I'll be a coach, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, I got to be around soccer. Like, I love it so much. Like, and growing up, I felt like I learned so much from uh, a lot of people, like, coaches, just being around the game so much that I learned so much. So, like, if I'm not a soccer player, then I for sure be a coach or kind of somebody like a, a mentor. I love like talking to people and just, I mean, like just even this conversation talking about soccer and like going back and forth, like I, I enjoy these conversations and I feel like I have a lot to learn in soccer and I have a lot to teach. So it's something that like, if I wasn't like uh, for sure a soccer player, I for sure like be a coach and just want to give back for sure. Mm-hmm. For me, um, I'd probably try to like, like be good at another sport just because like I love like competition and I love like just getting like working hard at like a sport and like something physical but if it wasn't that I'd probably do something in, like business and marketing like that's what I majored in in college and like I enjoyed it a lot like I enjoyed learning about it and I thought the first time in my education that like um I actually like enjoyed like the stuff that teachers were putting on the board because like it was something that I was into so I probably do something with business marketing try to market for like a lower level a lower tier like sports team and try to like show like community-based things if that were a possibility yeah yeah speaking of uh, college so like we we do have a lot of listeners who are actually students actually practicing uh, a good amount of them being uh, you know studying to become sports lawyers so Mm -hmm. actually i want to ask you you guys played football at a high level even during college so how did you you know balance both football and uh, education well, I think from my personal experience, I thought that I got a lot of help, like being a student athlete. I thought mm-hmm. that both universities that I went to like really assisted and understood the student athlete lifestyle. So they mm-hmm. assisted us like with tutors, with um, sending emails to our teachers, like 
hey, like, this is their game schedule. Like, can we work around it and stuff like that? So it eased a lot of the stress. And as far as, like, when it's time to get the work done and stuff like that, like, just get it done. Like, um, like the same time you spend on your phone, the same time you spend, like, an hour with your friends, you can spend that hour, like, getting the work done. And um, just being able to organize yourself and prioritize and understanding the way your mind works. Because some people work, like, better at night. Like, they work better, like, with pressure on, like, oh, there's a time frame. Some people work like, all right, like I want to get it done so then I can hang out. So just understand how your mind works and how your scheduling is and fit it in. Mm-hmm. And if you're studying this, like obviously it means a lot to you and you care about it. So treat it like treat it like you treat your sport. Like the homework, studying, that's a practice, you know? And then the games mm-hmm. are like the tests and the exams and stuff. So like mm-hmm. treat everything the same way you treat everything else, like hundred percent here, hundred percent there. It's not like 40, 60, it's a hundred percent, hundred percent. That's at least how I approached it at university. I made sure that everything lined up. Like if I want to do good in soccer, I have to do good in school and then I could, I could have a good time with my friends. If not, like I'm not going to have a good time with my friends because I didn't do, I didn't get my work done yet. So that's also adding that. So like just balance out and prioritize. I mean, from my experience, like you said, like there's a lot of resources and a lot of help you could get. And just, I mean, they have it all there for you. Like if you want it, just ask for it. You got to be willing to put yourself out there and just ask for the help, ask for, what you need and what you want, you'll get it. Like you'll succeed if you just ask for it and just put yourself out there to be the best student, like get the best grades you want. It's just putting yourself out there. And um, Mm -hmm. I mean, just managing your time wisely, like being smart with it and just putting in the effort, you put in the effort and everything will take care of itself. So yeah, that's how I approached it. I think a lot of people like, if they just manage their time and ask for help, then it'll be fine. Yeah, teachers want to, teachers and like professors want to want you to succeed. So like, just ask for help if you need an extension. Ask like, they're your friends, you know. Like you're gonna see them like a whole semester, whole quarter, or whatever. Like, like get a relationship with them. Those a professor right here. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> we, should, yeah. <laughs> we should ask him. So, do you give them extensions? So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, my panda is like you can do anything you want. So. I told you, you can do anything you want, and uh, like, but the thing is, I need the end result, so I am giving you free of the things, but in exchange of that, I think I also need something from that is the end result, right? Yeah. So you are getting freedom and using that freedom in different way. That is something which I will not like. I will not encourage. So mm-hmm. I I work something like that. If you want extension, yeah, you have some proper genuine reason for that. Take extension. Yeah, today tomorrow you have match. Today you can give the assignment. <laughs> take so if i have this time limit with me take three four days extension give you assignment that time mm-hmm. but yeah don't you misuse that <laughs> so i work like that no, no, yeah. so so today i just want to know another thing like no saturday sunday like today you are in saturday sunday both like we can go so do you guys have some chill day with you being a professional player and uh like normally people who are fit, you guys are fit. So normally I have seen people having a cheat day. Do you guys have a cheat day? Dang, that's a good question. Um, damn, like I'm really like, I'm not picky about what I eat or like super strict on like diets and stuff like that. Like, like he's been around me. Like there's certain foods that don't make me feel like good about myself. So like I don't eat them. But like after like a game or like, yeah, after a game pretty much or like, something that I've been working towards, like that day, like the rest of that day, I, I, I eat whatever I want, like give me a cheeseburger, you know, like those days, but like leading up to it or whatever, like, um, like I, I, I watch what I eat, but those certainly like the days after, the days after what I'm working towards, like, like just the day after, like the time after, like I'm fine eating something that I wouldn't normally eat. Cheat days for me. Oh, um, you don't gotta cheat. <laughs> Probably, yeah, just probably, like, after after the games, I mean, if that usually, like, during the week, like, building up to, like, a game or just in general, like, I try to, like, just stay, like, not the best, but, I mean, healthy at least, like, but after the games, like, if I'm with, like, family, we go to eat, I mean, trying to enjoy myself, especially, like, if we win and stuff, I do well, I'm going to enjoy my meal for sure. <laughs> Uh, speaking of food, uh, we want to know since we're from India, we're curious to know what is your favorite Indian food? Dang, oh, I love Indian food. I went to I went to Europe, I went to England one time, and England's really big on Indian food right. and like 
and oh, I forgot what it was called. It was a curry though, and it was like the best thing I ever had in my life. Like, I, it was like I don't like spicy. I don't like mm-hmm. I, I like I don't mind spicy, but I don't like I want flavor, you know. So it was like a great right. in between. I forgot what it was called, but it was so good. Oh my gosh! But it was it was it was really it was a curry that was really good. Do you have a favorite Indian food? Yeah, it was like the same thing. Oh. Is it chicken? It was it was chicken, yeah, and then like the sauce. And is, like, is it gravy? No, 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 it wasn't that. Dang. It's a dry. Is it tandoori, tandoori uh, chicken. It was like kind of like like more barbecue orange. type. Oh, okay. uh, and it's dry, right? So maybe it's a tandoori chicken. <laughs> maybe it's a tandoori chicken you are talking about. Maybe because yeah, if I, it has I, a I sauce, that... then it can be a butter chicken. So in English, you can only two things mainly: what is butter or a, that tandoori, uh, the dry one. I'm gonna have to try it again and like get the name next time. <laughs> Or you could just come to India and try the OG one. Try the real deal, huh? I wish. Hopefully one day. Yeah. <laughs> Now you are always welcome. So basically, see, I was also in India for a certain period of time, but the the way they serve the food, and we used to say this is not the real India. And then we used to ask them, see, you know, put some extra spice on this. You need to put this, this, this. They were like, sir, are you from India? Then I was, like, yeah, that's the reason I'm asking you to put this, this, this. <laughs> These are the Indian ingredients you need to put, not this one. So yeah. Their flavor is something you know, like not the real Indian flavor. You need to get in there. Yeah, mostly if you are in Mexico, Brazil, the Latins, yeah. even their spices are most toward the Indian. Th- like, you know, mostly Mexico. I have been yeah. since Spain. Like I've tasted some Spanish Spanish food, and you know, like since they are, like their flavor is somewhere towards India. Like no issue with their spice. Well, my English finish is that even Spanish people, Mexican people, it's spice. So, mm-hmm. but being an Indian, we say no. This is okay. It's okay for us. Yeah. What's the like best Indian food to you guys? Or what's your favorite? See, see, mine is something like uh, so. I don't know about Ryan, so uh, maybe Ryan is vegetarian. <laughs> so he, he actually he, actually he love to he love to drink my blood, right? So like as as a junior of mine. So, but my Indian food is something like a uh, chicken tandoori. So it's a dry thing, and yeah, it's very it's not that like, much spicy. Yeah, it's a barbecue type of thing. Mm. You know, like just not with sauce, dry with spice and all. And you need to try it once. What about you, Ryan? Two things. All right. One is it's the biryani. You guys would have tried biryani, right? Like, no, he's telling it. lie. I'm telling you. He's, no. te- he's telling lie. I'm telling you. He <laughs> loves KFC chicken. KFC. No, 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 no. no. Just not no actually, <laughs> no. No, see KFC chicken. <laughs> see, that's not Indian food, right? See, we're talking about Indian food. So I, I tell you, there's this thing. I'm from Kerala, so that's God's own country, and uh, we have this thing called parotta. Parotta is like a. It's just a round thing. I don't know to explain further, and it's and uh, parotta and beef curry, all right. So um, Kerala is like one of the best. You get one of the best, like the best sort of beef you can have in India. You get in Kerala, and it's really spicy and it's really crispy. So. That's the best that's, thing. That's the reason. That's the reason he always posts his story on Instagram and Magdi. I am in KFC, you know. But now he's <laughs> saying something different. <laughs> so come on. Okay, guys. Uh, so and, uh, uh, I think Subrajit, sir, I want you to wait. do one thing. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure. Sure. Just, I want to ask you. Then to say, Roland, just time like Robert and Roland, both of you. If you guys come to India, just come to the eastern part of India. Like my place, I'm from Calcutta, right? And uh, Calcutta is basically known as the mecca of Indian football. So one of the India or Asia's biggest stadium is in Calcutta. Mm-hmm. And you need to come in India. We, I am from the eastern coast, so basically he's from the western coast. I'm from the eastern coast. Yeah, awesome. and our language is something different. Our state language is different, right? We correct uh-huh. with Hindi or English. That's our national language. Uh, our culture is different so you need to come in yeah both we are from the like football loving countries mm-hmm. so but the history wise in in india calcutta has much more specific history like the oldest club is in india so in calcutta if you search mohan bagan which is asia's oldest club and they have uh, played against sheffield united once upon a time british time british colony time mm-hmm. that's in calcutta and yeah in calcutta we also have fish then you forgot to the thing we are the fish continent So basically, you know, in biryani, he's saying biryani. We have three type of biryani. One is Hyderabad biryani. One is Calcutta biryani. One is Lucknow biryani. Yeah, you need guys need to come in India. All right. Yeah, hopefully one day. But not KFC like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I want KFC, I'd actually come to the US because obviously it's it's originated there. So that's the OG ones. Yeah. Um. So I actually uh before uh, we wind up, uh, Subrajit sir, uh, let's teach the two brothers a little bit of Hindi. So can you like make them say a particular statement in Hindi? 
it will be it will be tough for them so, all right no no just a simple can, statement you, uh, you can say how are you just we say, in english we say how are you right in spanish we say como estas yeah. like in, i can understand you guys are ever of the spanish mm-hmm. so como estas in hindi we say kaise ho kaise ho ha <laughs> that is how are you kaise ho like that uh, next ho? time yeah kaise ho so you know like next time you can ask them by little has a kaise ho they will be like oh, what's wrong with this <laughs> Okay, he has to get a contract, not lose one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so uh, as we come to the end, uh, Ronaldo and uh, Romario, firstly, thank you so much for taking time off of your busy schedule. Uh, before leaving, is there uh, you know any piece of motivation you'd like to piece of motivation or piece of advice you'd like to give to all you know budding athletes and all of them you know trying to build their career? Um, I mean, for me, like the only thing I could like I really tell everybody is just um, I mean, no matter what you're going through, no matter whatever in your sport, in soccer, in life, whatever, like there's always light at the end of the tunnel. So no matter what you're going through, just mm-hmm. approach it with alegría, happiness. Like at the end of the day, like you could go through the toughest time, you could always find a little a little positive in every negative situation. So no matter what you're going through, you just know like it's gonna be okay and just keep fighting you keep going you keep going no matter what and that's going to show a lot in yourself you know and in the long run you'll you'll be proud of yourself and no matter what you're going through you'll you'll be happy and hopefully the alegria is still with you no matter what and you just keep going and you spread that alegria and happiness to everybody around you no matter no matter what you're going through no matter the situation you're in you're always if you find a little alegria and happiness it, it'll be okay and uh, i feel like that's always like something you could carry yourself to make life and just your situation better. Mm-hmm. Uh Peggy back in with that um yeah like just life's too short to like not enjoy it and life's too short to also just not try like don't be afraid of failure, don't be afraid of losing, don't be afraid of like that like don't be afraid to care like just try, you know, like you try you can you it's better to live with trying and, and failing than to not try at all so You never know what you're capable of. You never know who's going to believe in you. You never know who's going to take a chance on you. You never know what can come out of something. So just always try your best, give it your all and care. That's kind of like what I think about whenever I do things, just try. And especially for uh, Ryan, please uh, love real Roland, not the other Roland. <laughs> <laughs> right, do, so. you guys have any, do you guys have any like quotes that you guys live by or like things that motivate you to like get things going to start off? I I do play basketball so I have all of us you know from Jordans to Kobe's quotes you know you miss 100% of the shots you don't take and I've missed over 9000 shots in my career so yeah there are so many of them uh, what about you sir subrajit sir do you uh so mine is something that once upon a time used to play football for my eastern region right in days of our country so we have region I used to play for eastern region I used to be center back oh <laughs> <laughs> right and part time if needed i used to be cdn so but now everything changes you know i just came back into uh, being a professor in sports law domain working on that so yeah from that came i changed to like you know from field i came to the academic and sports law manages course something in sports is we are lacking behind in india so that's my motive so i want to develop this field that is why i started this organization to make people motivate to study about this sports No, yeah, of course. Okay. So, so uh, Randy, so what you? <laughs> so once again, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ronaldo and Romario. It was a pleasure having you, and it was we had a a very beautiful and a very pleasant conversation. And uh, we are looking forward to obviously staying in touch with you, and uh, hopefully we could see you guys someday in India. Yeah, mm-hmm. hopefully. No, just thank you for having us, and honestly, like. I mean just talking to you guys and just talking having a conversation about just soccer and just like getting to know each other in the conversation being so like good I, uh, I appreciate like you guys having us and just it means a lot to be honest and I just want to say thank you for sure If you're ever in California or Los Angeles or anywhere just reach out to us and you're more than welcome with us And hopefully the podcast and everything keeps blowing up man this is this is awesome just to see you guys and like everything you guys are doing like hopefully it keeps growing and growing it is it's inspiring to see for sure 
thank you very much for your kind words and yeah. for your support and so before and i want you guys to tell like subscribe this is ryan's line basically oh, right? yeah. i think right subscribe everything follow whatever turn the, turn the notifications yeah, on for sure then we'll him so thank you once again so you guys are going to start your day we are going we guys are going to end our day so it's now it's mostly like 11 pm going to be 11 pm in india and i think you are in morning starting yeah, going to start interesting enough for yeah. us to be on here <laughs> and cheers to you guys for starting your day and thank you for your time in the morning i appreciate cheers. you guys thank you, guys. Thank you.